Hi, my name is Wahid and I'm a photographer from the Netherlands. And today we are in my home studio. So recently I created these photos and this one. It's done with a technique called shutter drag, rear curtain sync, or basically a portrait with a long exposure. I just love the way that you can use this to show motion and action. It just looks pretty cool and pretty unique. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to achieve similar results. Be warned though, despite just using two lights for this technique, I would consider it to be quite advanced. I think this technique looks particularly well with action type of stuff with athletes. And so we'll be making a new photo with boxing. Uh, I did boxing for like six months, a long time ago. I do still have my gloves. So for this photo, I'll be the model. Let's get started. These are the pieces of equipment that you need for this technique. A constant light source, 60 watts would be more than enough. One flash, any flash will really do. Obviously you'll need a camera with manual controls and preferably with the option for rear curtain sync. A tripod is very essential. And it's super important that you can make your room pitch black or near pitch black. All right, so the way this technique works is as follows. I'll first give you a quick little rundown then we'll do some photography and after that I'll explain a few more of the specifics. Right, so we will be aiming for a 1 to 2 second exposure time. This will give us plenty of time to create movement and to punch. I've got a constant hard light source placed over here. This will create our light trail, it'll show the movement. I've placed my key light, the flash, over here. I've placed it a little bit towards the back because I want a short light myself. I want to create more drama and more shadow. There won't be any light here, that'll be shadows. And uh, yeah, I, I just like drama. It's also a good way to create a lot of contrast. Let's say you have an athlete with big muscles, then this is a good way to show all of his or her shapes. If you want less drama, if you want to light your subject in a different way, just place your light more towards the front. Our camera will be in rear curtain sync mode. So that means that the flash will fire at the end of our exposure time. So one, two, flash. If you would be using front curtain sync or just the normal flash mode, the flash would fire immediately when you press the shutter. And so when using rear curtain sync, you can imagine, let's say we start here with our photo, we press the shutter, we've got two seconds, I start moving, one, two, and here at two, the flash fires. This is our end position and this part will be sharp and clear and in focus. And then it's basically a matter of trial and error, getting your timing and position right. One final thing that we have to do and explain before we start shooting, as you can see, my window over here is basically open. It's letting light in. When doing this technique, it's super important that your room is as pitch black as possible. Because each light source will create light trills. It will show the motion. And that will quickly create a very messy and complicated image. We don't want that. As a photographer, you want to be in control of the lighting. Alright, the room is basically pitch black. Obviously, I have this video light on. I will turn it off when shooting. The constant light source and the modeling light of my flash, they will help me with focusing. But uh, yeah, now we can start. Let's put on a more fitting outfit. Time to make some photos.
All right, that was the shoot. Really fun to do. Every time it's a little surprise how the image is going to turn out. I got quite excited while doing it and I'm also pretty happy with the results. Let's talk about a few important details to understand this technique better. Some people have asked me before why I use rear curtain sync and not front curtain sync. Well, I guess it depends on the image that you want to achieve. In my case, I wanted to move forward and punch. I wanted to show the trail behind me and I wanted to end like this. It just makes more sense in my head and seems more logical to use a rear curtain sync because our exposure starts here. One, two, flash. That's just uh, chronological. If I would use front curtain sync, so the flash fires here, poof, flash, and then I move. This is not the action that I want to capture. You could use front curtain sync if you would want to show the future, the movement that is about to happen. Let's say I'm here and we have like a little glance into the future, poof. Then we see this as our ghost, as our light trail. Could be pretty cool, just not the image that I wanted to go for. You might be wondering why I place my constant hard light source in the back. That's mainly because I don't want that light to be hitting my face. Because otherwise the constant hard light source and the light from the flash, they will both blend in. And uh, yeah, you'll just get a less clear and less sharp image. Because every movement my face makes, the constant hard light source will create light trails of my face. And thus we will get a less sharp and less clear image. I want to keep those two separate. That's why I also tend to move a bit forward away from this light trail to get the sharpest image possible. A hard light source also creates the most visible light trails. So if you want your light trails to be less visible, try experimenting with different light sources or lower the intensity. All right, and that's how you use rear curtain sync to create some long exposure portraits with a cool light trail effect. If you're going to try this for yourself, feel free to tag me. It would be really fun to see it. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.